India. The, the only land where the smallest of everyday acts are pervaded with spiritual ethos. This is a land and culture which has for thousands of years nurtured yogis, siddhas and realized beings. These beings explored life in depth, looked at all aspects of human well-being and consciously structured the culture so that even the simplest act became a spiritual one. Spirituality has stayed alive and flourished for so many centuries in India because these beings created spaces and temples where they invested their knowing. Kailash is one such place which is a powerhouse of energy. The first being to store his knowing in an energy form here was the Yadi Yogi Shiva himself. Though they are thronged by worshippers, the ancient temples were originally built not as places of worship, but as powerful energy centers which allowed people to transform themselves in a very deep way. A visit to the temple in the morning allowed one to go about his daily work with a certain sense of balance and depth. There was a deep and exact science of temple building. The temples in India were created according to the instructions laid out in the Agama Shastras. Each Jyotirlinga temple had a specific function. If you want health, you go to a certain temple. If you want material well-being, you go to another. Each temple was created to address a different aspect of life. The existing lingas in these temples have been consecrated for one or two particular chakras which benefit people accordingly. But many enlightened beings down the ages dreamed of a temple that held a linga with all seven chakras fully energized. A dhyana linga temple. Of all the temples, this is the most complex to create. And so difficult is the task that it never happened. The closest attempt to consecrate such a dhyana linga took place almost a thousand years ago in Bhojpur in Madhya Pradesh. But the consecration process could not be completed. There is now only one place where a Dhyana Linga stands. The only one to be fully consecrated in over 2000 years. The Veliangiri Mountains are known as the Kalash of the South because they have been the abode of countless siddhas, seers and sages since time immemorial. Shiva himself is said to have spent time in these mountains. It is at the foothills of the Valyangiri mountains that Sadguru Jaggi Vasudev established the Dhyana Linga. It took him three lifetimes of intense sadhana to achieve this. The consecration of Dhyana Linga involved an intense process of prana pratishtha which spanned over three years. In India, it is tradition that prior to entering any temple, one is required to wet one's entire body to help make one more receptive to the energies of the temple. The Tirthkund 
is a subterranean tank with a solidified mercury lingam immersed in water. This rasa linga was consecrated in a particular way, fundamentally as a preparatory tool to enhance spiritual receptivity in a person before he enters the dhyana linga. The Tirth Kund's energy-soaked water has an uplifting effect on the physical body in terms of health and well-being and stabilizes the pranic imbalances in a person. Before the entrance of the inner Parikrama is the Sarva Dharma Stambha. Symbols of all the major religions of the world are inscribed on three sides of the Stambha. A welcome that goes beyond religious divides. To reach the open pathway, the inner Parikrama, one must climb three steps. The unusual height of the steps forces the visitor to press the soles of his feet onto the pebbled surface of these steps, which in turn activates certain nerve centers in the body, a preparation of the system to make it more receptive to the energies of the Dhyanalinga. The entrance of the Parikrama is graced by Patanjali Maharishi, who is regarded as the father of yogic sciences. On the other side is the Vanashri Shrine, the feminine deity of the Dhyanalinga temple. The energies of the deity are such that it is specially beneficial for women and children. The six panels on the approach depict moments from the lives of six South Indian sages who reached the peak of consciousness through their devotion to the Divine. At the heart of the temple, one finally stands before the immense and awe-inspiring Dhyanalinga, vibrating with the power of the primordial. It casts its spell on all those who enter its enigmatic presence. There is no other such Linga in the world. It is Sadhguru's wish that all the visitors to the temple be allowed directly into the Garbhagriha or the Sanctum Sanctorum, a rare privilege in most temples. In Sanskrit, Dhyana means meditation, Linga means form. Here, Sitting silently for a few minutes within the sphere of the Dhyana Linga is enough to make even those unaware of meditation experience a deep state of meditativeness. Being in the presence of the Dhyana Linga offers a person the rare privilege and the intimacy of being with a Guru. With all seven chakras energized to the very peak, it touches one in a different dimension, sowing the seed of spiritual liberation in a person. This sacred space is being maintained by a dedicated group of brahmacharis who have been initiated in the Guru Shishya Parampara in order to enable people to receive the grace and energies of Dhyanalinga for thousands of years to come without any distortion. Share the experience of the Dhyana Linga. Once a being is touched by the grace of Dhyana Linga, love and compassion towards other human beings is a natural outcome. This finds expression through the various social outreach projects. Action for Rural Rejuvenation works towards uplifting the rural community and provides free health care in more than 4,500 remote villages in India. Project Green Hands aims at planting 11.4 crore trees in the next five years to increase the green cover of the country. Yeah. 
Isha Vidya works to provide free quality education to rural children on par with good suburban schools. Every Mahashivratri, Sadhguru conducts a night-long satsang of explosive meditations. More than 6 lakh people visit the Dhyanalinga on that night. One more Tirth Kund is being planned in order to accommodate the rapidly growing number of devotees visiting the temple. Since the Dhyanalinga temple is situated in a reserve forest, away from the city, a chaltery which provides the people who travel and come to the temple with a place to stay, an offering of food, Annadanam, is being planned. The greatness of this nation lies in its rich ancient tradition and culture, which is slowly dying. Sadhguru has a long-term vision of reviving the arts and knowledge of our culture and has established a system of transmitting these art forms in the traditional Guru Shishya Parampara. Kalari Payattu, Bharatnatyam, classical music, Siddha and Ayurvedic sciences are imparted here in their pure form. In a world that is fragmented by divisions, it is more important than ever that each person begins to blossom towards his ultimate nature. Here at the Dhyanalinga, each and every person has the chance to touch another dimension beyond the boundaries of normal human existence. In ancient times, it was kings and noblemen who endowed and built temples. However, the Dhyanalinga has been built by ordinary people as an offering of love with the labor of thousands of volunteers. Almost all the money that it took to build the temple came from thousands of small donations made by people who gave up something in order to make the Dhyanalinga happen. Today, we are searching for the resources to complete the vision for the Dhyanalinga temple. As we seek to reach out to touch and transform more and more people, there's an opportunity for you too. We invite you to be a part of this historic endeavor and to offer this possibility to yourself, your children and generations to come. Donate generously in whatever way you can.